Painting hair could sometimes be frustrating, so I'm going to give you a few tips here on what I like to do for hair that looks realistic but doesn't go into a crazy amount of detail. The first thing I like to do is paint in a few lines in the direction that the hair is flowing. Now these lines are the shadows in between the locks of hair. So I'm not actually painting the hair yet. I'm just placing in shadows and making note of where the highlights are going to be, where I can come in and pull them out. So as you can see, I'm doing this very quickly and kind of messy. I'm not worried about detail really at this point because what I'm doing is just placing in the shadows and the highlights so that I know where I'm going to come in later with my eraser or my X-Acto blade to start adding in actual locks of hair. When painting hair, it's important to remember that it's easiest and best to do this slowly through multiple layers. It's also a little bit more forgiving this way. So once I have that first layer down, I have something to work with. So here I'm using my eraser and I'm just trying to pull out brighter highlights. Now I'm not painting individual hairs here. I'm just placing in areas that are lighter next to areas that are darker and eventually I'll use some more paint to shift those from transitions to dark to light to make it look a little bit more like hair. If you're trying to erase paint and having a difficult time, there's three things you need to have set up before you go into the painting. One is you need an easily erasable paint. So Createx Illustration Colors or ComArt both work very well. The second thing you need is an aggressive eraser. These are usually called sand erasers. I'll have links down below in the video description. And the last thing you need is a very smooth surface. My favorite is canvas set up with multiple layers of gesso. I have a video explaining how to do that, which I'll also link down below. Once I have some of the paint removed with the eraser, I switch back to my airbrush and spray some of the original value down over this area. Now the original paint is Createx Illustration Burnt Umber. And what I'm basically doing is doing this step over and over. I put down some paint, then I erase into it, and then I add some more on top. And this process is what builds up layers and eventually starts to look like hair. When we get a little bit further along, I switch over to an X-Acto blade. When using an X-Acto blade, you're going to get a very thin, bright highlight. Now what I like to do is I like to start with my eraser first, as you saw a few seconds ago. I go over it first with an eraser, that way I get a very soft highlight erased out. That kind of looks like hair in the background. Then when I come in with the X-Acto blade, these look like brighter hairs in front of the softer hair, so it just helps to add a little bit more depth to, to the hair. Once I have some hairs down with the X-Acto blade, I'm switching back to my airbrush and laying down some color. So again, I'm using the same color as before, Burnt Umber. And what I'm doing is I'm trying to spray some more paint in the darker areas and a little bit less on the closer, brighter highlight areas. This is going to help create a 3D look. The areas that are darker are going to look farther away and the areas that are brighter are going to look closer to us. So you just build this up slowly. And then once this is done, you could switch back over to your blade and add some more hair and just continue this process. So now I'm switching over to sepia, which is a little bit cooler than the burnt umber. The burnt umber is very warm and it's looking a little too orange. So I'm spraying this mainly in the shadows to help make it look a little bit less monochromatic. Now I want to go into some detail about using an X-Acto blade to pull out highlights. The first thing you need is to make sure that your canvas or your substrate surface is very, very smooth. Make sure if it's canvas that you have a bunch of layers of gesso on it and then you wet sanded it. Uh, the video on how to do this is linked down below in the uh, video description. One of the reasons I really enjoy using canvas for this technique rather than paper or synthetic paper is that you can get very aggressive with the blade on canvas. You don't have to worry about cutting through it. You can hold the blade just like a normal pencil and you could press very hard when you pull. This way it's slightly easier to pull out curves when you're using um, a, a normal blade on a regular piece of paper. The blade kind of wants to stay in straight lines, so it's difficult to pull curved lines. You have to use like a lot of strength to, to get it around. But if you use canvas, you don't have to worry about cutting into it because if you press hard, you're just pressing into a few layers of gesso, so it does no damage to the canvas itself. So if you're doing this, uh, I recommend trying it on canvas. Again, watch that video on how to set up a canvas, get it very smooth, and this technique works great. So again, I used an eraser to pull out some highlights. This is the softer highlights below, and then I switch back over to the razor blade, and this is going to give me the sharper highlights, which is going to look like hair that's closer to us, and the softer uh, area underneath is going to look like hair farther away. Again, kind of creating that depth. So as I move further down the hairline, I want to do the same thing by 
placing in some color. Now just remember, the color that I put down here is the shadows between locks of hair, not the actual hair itself. So we just put that down to get a base and then we switch over to the blade or the eraser and start removing the highlights, which are the locks of hair. If you're new to using this technique, I want to point something out. This is a subtractive method, meaning that we're removing paint for our highlights. When you use a razor blade or an X-Acto blade, you're removing the paint right down to the substrate. So in this case, we have white gessoed canvas. So any highlight pulled out with an X-Acto blade is going to be pure white. What that means is any of those highlights are going to be too bright. So we're always going to need to knock those down a little bit more with our original transparent paint. In this case, I'm using burnt umber. So I use that same color to spray a very light glaze over those bright highlights, and that's going to help knock them down. While we're drawing or painting, there's a trap that a lot of us fall into without even being aware of it. As human beings, we like order, and it's very difficult for us to get a purely random sequence in something that has a lot of randomness, like hair, for example. Those who are new to painting have a difficult time with this, and even those experienced who have been painting for a long time also have difficulty with this because it's kind of going against our, our nature to want to wanna place things in order and have everything neat. But what we need to do is we need to add, add randomness to our hair. One of the best ways to do this is to work fast. If you go slow and try to add each lock of hair or each strand of hair in, what's going to happen is they're going to be lined up way too evenly and it's going to look very unnatural. So going quick for areas of hair are going to help break it up, add a little bit of randomness, and just make it appear more natural. So moving along to this next part, I am adding in lines just like before. And remember, these lines are shadows in between the hair. I'm not actually painting the hair itself here. But what I'm trying to do is move my airbrush very quickly. I'm not worried if these lines come out looking wrong or strange. I could always adjust that later. But if I move them fast and move them quickly around, it's going to help create more of that randomness in the hair, which is going to help me get a more natural image as I continue to add the highlights in. I try to do the exact same thing with the X-Acto blade. I try to move the blade very quickly, and one thing I like to do is try to start and stop my lines in different spots. Again, this just helps add to the randomness of it, because if you start and stop in the exact same places, you can have a very linear look to the hair. When using an X-Acto knife to pull out highlights, you may notice that it tends to pull out the highlights better moving in one direction. Sometimes you go left to right, it doesn't pull it out, then you reverse it, and the highlight comes out perfectly. This is because at the edge of any blade, there's something called a burr. And that's basically a very thin piece of metal that's bent over in one direction. So whichever way that burr is bent is going to help uh, remove the paint much easier than the, the opposite direction. So make sure you try using the X-Acto blade in both directions because you'll notice that one way definitely pulls out better than the other. Another option you have is to lightly run the blade in one direction over a sharpening stone. This way you'll help set the burr in the opposite direction. So hopefully this video helped you out and offered you a few tips in painting hair. I think the trick is you should need to kind of work in short intervals. So what I love to do is sit down for 20 minutes or a half hour and work on one section and then back up and you know do something else for an hour and then come back and kind of repeat that over and over. It um, If you work too much and you try to get the hair all done in one shot, if you're like me, you're going to end up rushing, and when you rush, things get messy. So try to take your time and, uh, you know, enjoy it. Have fun while you're working on it. And, of course, if anyone has any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them down below in the uh, comment section, and I'll get back to you and try to help you out. Remember, painting hair in the beginning can be a bit tricky, so hopefully this offers some tips uh, to help you along. And, again, don't worry about mistakes. Don't worry about failing. That's just part of art. It's always about making mistakes and then trying the best you can to find a way to rectify and fix them. All right, well, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time.